In the white gear, Jonatas Gracie of Atos. In the blue, you have Otavio Souza of Gracie Baja, the veteran going up against a relatively uh, newer face on the black belt scene. Jonatas Gracie, uh, European champion, Panogi champion, but uh, he's uh, kind of funny because he said to me yesterday about how, you know, he's been, he was a, he was a colored belt coming up through the ranks. Otavio had already won a black belt world title. That's crazy, you know? yeah. Otavio's so, first uh, title, world titles in 2012, but most recently took it in 2016. Been dominant for a long time. Here he is, jumping right into things. Yeah, we see Jonathan Gracie in the white, pulling guard now, playing this Delhi Heaver guard, and already got a very strong grip with the pants with his left leg. Right now, fishing for a, a grip with his right hand. You see him circle his hand out, try to get the sleeve, and... Everybody in the Atos training room has said the same thing. They've said, you know what? Jonatas' grips are just insane. Like, pound for pound, he's one of the strongest guys in that room. Yeah, I've heard that many times over. I remember Ed Minaj specifically mentioned that after a match with Jonatas. You can see uh, Otavio here looking to negate that power. Strips the grip, though. I was like that use of the, the right hand in Otavio Souza in, in stripping the grip. But Jonatas goes right back to controlling the ankle of the Dalagiva leg. We can attempt some unbalancing here from Gracie as Otago Souza out of position here. Beautiful use of the legs to use the X guard, and yes, sweeps back very quickly, doesn't spend very much time on bottom whatsoever, so we've got 2-2. Two -two. We're uh, just over a minute and a half into the match right here. This is uh, this is interesting, because uh, you look at those sweeps, Chase. Jonatas, we worked pretty hard to score his, and Otavio answered back very quickly. Yes, yes. Here now we will see another sweep attempt from Gracie They're coming up on the feet. Could finish this single here. I love the tenacity of Jonathan to finish the sweep. Otavio though is still pushing away. And he's awarded the two points. A good position to either take the back or try and put Otavio Souza's back on the mat, which he does restart back in the center of the mat. Very hard fought for. Otavio Souza was not looking to concede that position. He did give up the two points. It is now four points to two for Jonathan's Gracie, but Otavio Souza, even on the edge of battles like that, he's so hard to hold out. Yeah, that really took a lot of effort from Jonathan's. Uh, he did not give up, did not look for a, uh, a reset there in the center. He shakes that down. Just on that play out on the edge of the map, which was great because we saw a solidified position. And Jonathan's now in a very stable top position. He just not going to be easy. He immediately swept back and saw the corner. When we got this nice big man, it's uh, it's nice to see the referees let them use all of it. This is a, uh, a pretty big man we got here, actually. This is a uh, championship-sized mat almost. We're going to restart the position now with Otavio on bottom. 
in the guard. And you no, know, it was interesting for me to watch the way that. Uh... Oh, interesting. Neutral East. Kind of surprised by that, I'll be honest, but thought Gracie was on top. But... But it was interesting to me to note the way that Gracie came so close to getting top position or getting around to the back from the sweep. And I think the pressure is very much on Otavio Souza here, and we can see this. He's taking it up a gear. Yes, yes, so despite the restart, Otavio elects to go back on bottom with his system guard from the Gracie Baja. That's it right here. Well, it's going to be... Ooh, oh, nice pass attempt there. He ends up jumping to the guard in the sequence, and Otavio will score from that. Thought we might see uh, Gracie go for like a flying armbar or something in that transition there. He was there. thinking about it, he was thinking about it, but ends up on bottom giving him two. Still plenty of time to work here, five and a half minutes left in this match. It's a smart move from Otavio pulling guard though, right on the restart, because it was much easier. Here's that a quick replay of that flying guard right there, but let's straight back to the action because Otavio pulled guard and, uh, and he did so knowing that, man, it's going to be a lot easier for me to score via a sweep than it would be for me to try and pass the guard of Gracie. He's had a solid five minutes, well, about four and a half minutes worth of trying to pass the guard. No success. Didn't even get close, to be honest. But every time that he was on bottom, he was able to sweep very, very quickly. A lot of fans in attendance here at the the Jiu-Jitsu Khan, the host for this GP here this weekend in Las Vegas. Thousands of Jiu-Jitsu practitioners from the worldwide community have descended upon the city. So many tournaments running at the same time. We have Masters World, Jiu-Jitsu Khan, and this GP. And this is one of the highlights of the entire weekend. And the invitation or the four-man brackets, not a large bracket, but very, very high level, high quality of uh, High stakes as well. There's ten thousand dollars in the bracket. Posture there from Fabio Souza, rock solid. But I feel like he's uh, he's not going anywhere with it right now. He's not going forward, Chase. He's uh, very much on his heels, and the posture is incredible if you look at it. Like it's it's textbook pox posture, but small battles going on with the grips, and he's. We actually see a reach there, and there is a penalty against both grapplers for inactivity. Our referee, Rodrigo Tachi, reminding them that, hey guys, you've got to work here, you can't just hang out. And unfortunately, we need to change angles here, we've got a little bit of a blockage. Our referee obscuring the action. John just now working hard. Bob Falzatavi, like we saw earlier in this match. Tavio, though, showing off that base, stripping grips. It's one thing to know, Otavio has over 150 matches at the black belt level, but has maintained nearly a 50% submission rate throughout his career. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, he is one of the best known veterans in the middleweight division. Has floated between divisions, but back in the middleweight division, the same division where he won his world titles. 35 years of age, very much the, uh, the veteran in this category as well. The, the next eldest uh, competitor will be Hernando Canudo at 25. So he's bringing a lot of experience. And as you mentioned, won his first world title all the way back in 2012, nine years ago. But then he went and won his first Brazilian national title in 2019. It just shows that he has kept growing as the sport has evolved and remained on top for such a long time. And it's really an incredible accomplishment. Struggling to find a, oh, to unlock the, the key to Jonathan Gracie's guard, though. Jonathan Gracie's guard, his grip's so strong, and every time that Otavio tries to move forward, Jonathan Gracie's doing a really good job of pushing him away, elongating, using that kind of long range, using his legs. And you can see, again, right there, that Otavio stood up, but Gracie is doing a good job of maintaining a fair amount of distance between them. And there you can see, look at that. The use of the right foot on the inside of the thigh, stretching Otavio's base, makes it very difficult for Otavio to mount any kind of attack when his base is compromised like that. 
And the timing of this match may be critical, right? We're right. We're entering the final phase here, especially in a, in a game match where they're looking maybe for one last score. So if anyone manages to, to put two points on the board or three points for passing, they do not want to give back that position. So I think we're seeing a bit of a calculated approach from both athletes as they're looking at the clock, hearing the instructions from their coaches, thinking, okay, this is my last key moment to, to take the win here. I think that's a very, very good take on the situation because we knew how hard it is for Gracie to, to, to sweep Otavio and how quickly Otavio was able to score back. So Jonathan's Gracie could be timing this last sweep here carefully so as not to allow Otavio Souza the time necessary from which to score back. We actually hear Otavio Souza's coach in the, the coach's chair on the sidelines. He's, a, he's really urging Souza to go forward here. Urging him to pick up the pace and There is a small attempt at an east slide trying to get it through, but that Della Heaver guard of Jonathan Gracie is so powerful and very, very sticky. 30 seconds now to Tavio, briefly forced to post one more time. Jonathan turtles for a moment here, looking to invert underneath the legs of Otavio. Briefly gets a shot at it. He's got less than 10 seconds to try and get up. Time expires here with the scoreboard tied. Let's see how our judges here see it. Yeah, I gotta say, in a, in a match as close as that, four, four, no advantages on the board and one penalty against each competitor, it is a question mark as to how this one will be judged. And I'm very, uh, I'm intrigued to see which way they call it. We're gonna go to a referee's decision now. It is unanimous for Jonatas Gracie who will advance through into the final here in the middleweight GP. All three judges call it for the Atos Black Belt. And in a match as close as that chase, it is very difficult to call who would win, but I don't feel that it's uh, that much of a surprise given the, the, how well Gracie dictated the pace of the match. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree with that. The work rate from Gracie, especially in the second half of the match, saw Otavio more or less uh, stabilizing, controlling, and reacting to what Jonathan was throwing at him. So Jonathan moves on to the final.